Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Alphabet of Hair. And today we're looking at the letter J, which stands for jargon, or hairdresser's jargon. Over the years, the more and more I talk to people about their hair, the more I've realised that a lot of the general public don't really understand hairdresser's jargon as well as we hairdressers think that they do. So what I'm going to do today is try and break down the most commonly used hairdresser's talk that you will hear in the salon and from your stylist and hopefully decipher the meanings for you. So first off, let's look at layering. So first off, let's look at long layers. When you have long hair past the shoulders, it's considered long. And when the hair is all one length, which is basically when all the hair meets the same length at the bottom, some clients complain about their hair going flat, especially on the top. This is due to gravity pulling all the hair downwards. In this instance, long layers would be suggested as a way of being able to keep your length but shortening the interior hair so that the hair lifts up a little bit from the roots. The shorter you go with the layers, the more the hair lifts, but you should let your stylist decide with you what's the shortest long layer that you should have. Next is short layers. These are more likely to be suggested on shorter haircuts when potentially you would be changing the shape of the cut a little bit. Shorter layers help to give more volume and body on the top area of a short haircut. Then there's textured layering. This involves creating shorter layers within mid-length hair, where the hair is not cut evenly. It doesn't involve cutting shorter layers on top, but it gives you shorter pieces within your current length to create looseness, texture, and reduce heavy weight, especially on a one length bob all the way down to the lob length. This technique has become very popular over the last five years, and this kind of layering can be done with either scissors or a razor. By the way, less layering is generally suggested when the hair is a lot finer, as this can make the hair look more sort of see-through. There's a lot more variations of layering in terms of hair cutting terms, but these are the main basic ones. But again, let your stylist decide what would be best for you. Another popular form of layering is what's known as graduation. Again, there are many variants of graduation, but the ones you're most likely to hear about are the following ones. So the first one is forward graduation, and this is a combination of the one length haircut at the back and the sides with face framing or C forming on a C on it, turned on its side, graduation at the front, which is the progression of lengths from shorter down to longer. It's an ideal technique for clients who would like some layers, but want to keep the solidness of the outline of their all one length haircut, or just want to lift the front area so that the haircut doesn't feel like a pair of curtains. It's often performed on longer hair to give the illusion of layering without losing much if any length from the back and involves pulling all the hair forward in step-by-step -step sections. This technique can be done on either curly or straight hair for varying shapes and styles. Next is the mid-length graduation. This technique is normally cut on sort of jaw length or longer bobs, what is more commonly called the lob these days. It's a great technique to accentuate on an A-line bob haircut. Then there's triangular graduation. This is normally the cutting technique to create a graduated bob haircut, where the layering technique generally goes higher up the back of the neck. This is technically known as triangular graduation and can be performed on varying lengths. So that's graduation, now let's look at short haircuts. First I want to take a look at the pixie crops. You'll often hear hairdressers talking about the pixie crop. A pixie crop is a short hairstyle that's generally shorter on the back and the sides of the head and slightly longer on the top with a very short fringe or bangs for our American viewers. Originally made popular by Audrey Hepburn in the film Roman Holiday and Mia Farrow in the film Rosemary's Baby, pixie cuts range from as short as half an inch in some places to two or three inches long in others. Any longer and it becomes another shape and another name. Now while we're on pixie cuts I just want to have a quick look at bed hair because this is easy to achieve on those short haircuts, especially on the pixie cuts. It's about creating those imperfections in the texture with product. Most stylists would use a matte wax or a paste to create this kind of texture. Bed hair can also be achieved with product on longer hair too, although these days this kind of texture on longer hair is more commonly known as beach hair or I woke up like this hair. Now let's look at the short layered haircut. This haircut is usually suggested when you may want to wear your hair with sort of forward sweeping spiky or heavier fringes. It's about creating weight at the front of your cut, but with some shorter layers to add dimension. The sides and the back can be cropped short or left anywhere between one to five centimeters long. 
This haircut can also be worn off the face for a more sleek, sharp look and is quite versatile. Think Vicky McClure's latest hair from the Line of Duty Series 5. Next we have the short back and sides or what's now more commonly known as a fade. This is a haircut that was originally created for men by barbers but has crossed over into women's haircuts too. It involves cutting the sides and back very short, kind of military length, but with more length on top. For men and women, the length can vary on the top area, depending on the final look required. This type of cutting technique is also known as tapering, which is where the length starts off very short in the neck and gradually gets longer as it goes up the back of the head. Over the last few years, the fade haircuts have become very popular since the increase in popularity of men's grooming and the introduction of contemporary barber shops, where the cutting techniques now go way beyond old-fashioned barbering. There's bald or skin fades, there's temp, there's burst, there's drop, there's flat top, high top variations, as well as high fades, low fades, mid fades, the pompadour fade, fade with a part, taper fade, box fade, low razor fade with hard part comb over and so the list goes on of fade 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 and I've just discovered a new one over the last couple of days called the fuck boy haircuts. Like me you're probably thinking what the fuck are they? Well despite the negative player reputation fuck boy hairstyles are cool and hot and women generally love the look whether your hair is thick thin curly straight or anything in between a fuckboy haircut will complement any face and offer an easy boost to your personal style. And by the way, I've checked this out, and according to the Urban Dictionary, a fuckboy is an arsehole boy who is strictly into sexual relationships. He'll lead a girl on, then let her down, then apologise only to ask for pics once the girl has welcomed you back into the trust. He almost never makes plans to hang out, so girls, be warned. Anyway, ultimately... Which short fade haircut or fuckboy haircut you have depends on the type of cut and style that you desire. An alternative for this style is also the undercut or the buzz cut or the undercut fade. This is where the sides and the back are still very short and tapered but are then completely disconnected from the top section to create a more extreme style when finished. Let's now take a look at texture, curls and waves. Many people these days talk about textured hair, especially since the birth of texturising sprays. But how do you define texture? Texture can be defined in so many different ways. So I'm going to look at the most popular ones for you, which will help, hopefully help you understand which one's which. A lot of texture sprays give hair a more matte looking texture. So basically making the hair look drier as opposed to shinier. Shiny hair is generally flatter and more sleek looking. Beach waves and texture are the most popular forms of texture right now. And this is where the texture in the hair looks like it has dried with sea salt in it, thus giving it a more matte, dry look. A lot of texture sprays contain sea salt, and you can get a lot of sea salt styling sprays too. That's a bit of a mouthful. A salty sea texture can also be achieved on straighter hair too, which just makes your straight hair look a bit more sort of dishevelled. Another texture is curls. Now curls are where the hair rolls around into a tight S shape, or like that. I've had people describe curls to me as round hair before, so this is why I'm trying to be a bit more descriptive. When curls are dried, they tend to sit outwards from the head and not flat. It can take a lot of length on curly hair before the hair starts to sit flatter. Curls take care and attention to look good, and I suggest that you take a look at my C for Curls video for more advice on that. Then there are waves, which are different to curls. These are not as tight as a curl, and whilst they still have an S shape to their form, it's a lot looser than a curl and sits a lot flatter to the head, although not as flat as sort of straight hair. Like curls, waves can come in varying degrees, but it's important to understand the difference so that you can differentiate what your own hair can and, and can't do in terms of styling. And so that's it for my J for jargon, but I just want to say one thing before I say goodbye to you all. When you're going to the salon, it's always a really good idea to take a picture or have some kind of idea that you can show your stylist what you're thinking in your head. This will really help to break down those barriers between you and your hairstylist in terms of what it is you're actually trying to achieve. Doesn't matter if the picture actually isn't even right for your hair, your hairstylist will be able to tell you whether that picture is right or wrong or whether it's possible to achieve that look on your hair. But having something, even if it's for colour, it's a really good idea to take something with you. 
And should you have any other hairdressing questions for me, then remember to DM me on any of my social media platforms. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is here. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.